am loving how packed out we are. <gasps> How's everyone doing? Were you good? Yeah? Did anyone have to get the one and only train that was coming into London today? <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, we have got so much uh, to get through today because we've got some brilliant speakers here. Already I've learned so much this morning. Um, and do you know what? I'm just loving the sort of passion, but also the friendliness. It's a really, really lovely atmosphere. And that's not just coming from our experts. That's coming from you guys as well. So thank you very much. Uh, and we're going to continue with this. Two ladies that have just made me smile. Um, they are podcasters. So you always know that they're going to be able to talk. Um, but we'll also do a Q&A at the end. So if there are any questions that you've got in the meantime, just sort of store them up. And um, I'll come around with the microphone at the end. So does anybody know the difference? between decluttering, tidying, and organizing, because actually, they're kind of very different but very important things. Then I'll just tell you a quick funny story that I was doing some decluttering on this morning that ended up on Gogglebox, which I was very excited about because I love that program. Uh, but they tore me apart because um, they were like, she's just putting, well, I won't use the language they use, uh, but they just said, I'm just putting stuff in boxes. Um, and that's the thing, actually. It's really important that you're, when you are decluttering, that you do something with the stuff that's left over. Um, um, but I'm not going to talk about that today because I'm going to leave it to our two fantastic speakers, Ingrid and Leslie from the Declutter Hub podcast. Let's give them a big round of welcome. There you go. Hello. Thank you. Oh. Oh, there's so many people. I know. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are we all? Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for coming out. I see a lot of familiar faces, which is absolutely wonderful. We are Ingrid and Leslie, and we run the Declutter Hub, and we are here to talk about decluttering, cleaning, and organizing and tidying, and where it all fits together and how it all goes. So, thank you so much for showing up. I mean, you never know if you're going to be there by yourself, kind of talking to yourself. So thank you. We are definitely among our people here, Ingrid. We've got professional organizers. We've got people who want to be professional organizers. We've got people with clutter. We've got people who've decluttered. And so it's so lovely to see so many different diverse people. And we're here, as Ingrid says, to talk about decluttering, organizing, and where cleaning fits in. So let's talk about something that you might do. Quite often people go, OK. I'm going to declutter this weekend. What am I going to do? I'm going to go to Ikea, Home Bargains, John Lewis, Amazon maybe, wherever you get your stuff from, and I'm going to buy a box, and I'm going to get my label machine out, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to put all that clutter into those nice boxes. And we're here, aren't we, Ingrid, to say, actually, there's a whole load of stuff that needs to come before that. While we all really want to do the box and the label thing, because that's the nice bit, Actually, there's a lot of hard stuff that needs to happen before, and that's what we're going to talk about, isn't it, Good. Yes, so Leslie, let me get up the quote. I'm clicking. I'm clicking. Oh, I'm going too fast. <laughs> I'm going back. There you go. This is the one I want. So, housework. No one notices when you do do it, but everybody notices when you don't do it. I can see lots of nodding faces around here. And so let's talk about some elements of housework. What is it that people don't notice? Is it that smear on the mirror that's been winking at you for days and days? Is it that pile of coats and shoes that's just flung by the front door when people come in from a busy day? Is it that cupboard in the kitchen that's got kind of a mishmash of a bit of pasta, a bit of spices, maybe a bit of tinfoil because we managed to stick that in, a bit of Tupperware because that's the only place it'll belong? Well, those different things that we've spoken about actually have different elements. One of them is cleaning, one of them is decluttering, one of them is organizing, and one is tidying. So it's really important to understand the difference between all of those things, and that's what we're here to talk about. Yes, because housework, it's, it's, it's the last thing you do. It, 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 how, the terminology housework kind of covers a lot of ground, doesn't it? But what is it exactly? It, it's a, a lot more than just bobbing your hoover around and kind of flinging a microfiber duster and thinking, all right, we're sorted. And today here at the Clean and Tidy Show, there's amazing products that you can buy to help you with your housework. Amazing sponges and cloths and oh my gosh, I'm loving it. I love a bit of cleaning as well. 
but we have to do more to make ourselves be able to clean effectively. You have to be decluttered and organized. And that requires planning, that requires thinking about your stuff, that requires changing your mindset about your clutter. So what we wanted to talk about is our tried and tested formula for going around a decluttering project from start to finish. Because what happens is, of course, we've already spoken about the fact that people jump into the box at the box stage. There's a whole load of stuff that comes before that, and that's what we want to talk about. So we're going to introduce you to something that we call our cycle of success. We love it, don't we, Ingrid? Yes, we have developed our cycle of success because we want to give you a step-by-step process to do and you can use our cycle of success however big or however small your project is so you can use it for your knicker drawer your sock drawer but you can also use it for when you're decluttering your garage or your kitchen it's really important to follow the steps into the cycle of success yes now we've just all listened to a fabulous talk hopefully you were all here for the lovely monique from the perfect planner company and she talks obviously about planning because she's from a planner company and the first stage on our cycle of success is plan we love a plan so we were delighted to hear monique talking about that because planning is everything so many people when they start on a decluttering journey jump straight in without thinking about a plan then may, of course, when we're planning, we need to think about logistics. When are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? How long are we going to give it? All of those things. But one of the very, very most important thing when it comes to planning is thinking about your goals. What is your goal going to be for this project? And we like to split it down into two different things, two types of goals, if you will. The first is what we like to call our big picture goal. So think about the why. Why, are you actually, why do you actually want to declutter your house? What is it that's stressing you out about the house that's making you want to take action and change things? So we like to call that our big picture goal, don't we, Ingrid? And so it might be, do you know what? It would be so nice for someone to say, do you know what, can I pop round for a coffee? And you not fly around the house like a maniac chucking stuff into cupboards to try and hide all that clutter. It might be that you've got a dumping ground spare bedroom and actually you'd like to come off the dining room table and have a little home office. So think about what your big picture goal is before you start to declutter, because that is the thing that's going to give you the inspiration, the motivation to continue. And then we really need to think about us, what we call our small manageable goals as well. We need to be able to break that big picture goal down into small manageable chunks. We need to think, you know what, today I'm going to do something sensible. I'm not going to say I need to declutter my whole house because that's too big and you will probably fail if you set out with that endeavor. We need to think, do you know what? I'm gonna do one cupboard at a time, one drawer at a time, and if I feel motivated to continue, I'm gonna continue on to my next goal. So it's so, so important to plan, to think about that big picture, and to break down your decluttering project into smaller chunks. Yes, because what you don't want to do, when we think about clutter, we automatically think about the hardest room in our house. We think about that spare room that's completely chock-a-block full of stuff that we've got no idea what it is. We think about our book collection that we love, or we think about our photographs or our sentimental items. But what we say is, if you're starting out with decluttering, you have to start smaller and you have to start easier. But the thing is, you have to get started. And that's the next step. Yes. Start. A lot of people find it so hard to get started, to get off those starting blocks because their project is far too big. They think about that whole room full of stuff and they don't think about, let's just start with one drawer, one shelf, one cupboard. It is essential to do that and it will come back later in the cycle of success why it's so important. Just one small thing. Because the thing is, if you think about a whole room you have to do, you're feeling immediately overwhelmed. You're like, how, how am I going to do that in one Saturday? This is like, this is too much. I'm feeling overwhelmed. And then you get struck down. Or what you might have is go, I'm only going to do it if I can do it perfectly. If I have the perfect box, the perfect label, the perfect color on the walls, if the stars align, the sun's shining, it's not raining, and there's no bad news on television, 
then I'm ready to declutter. And we let that perfectionism hold us back. This, I see people laughing on the front row. This is really true. <laughs> Now, Ingrid, you talked about perfectionism and how that obviously links to procrastination. Procrastination and perfectionism go hand in hand in the decluttering world. And we've started to veer into what we teach at the Declutter Hub, which is all about the emotional connection that we have to clutter. This is the crux of everything that we believe in. We believe everything. It's never about the stuff. It's always about the emotions that sit behind the stuff. That is what stops us in our tracks when it comes to clutter. It's not about the thing. It's about our relationship with the thing. It's about our habit with the thing. It's about our emotions with the thing. So the next stage on the cycle of success is when we really get into the crux of decluttering, which is the ask stage. So we ask ourselves maybe some simple questions. So do I need it? Do I use it? Do I love it? Those are the simple questions related to decluttering. And then it's a good starting point. But do I need it? Well, I don't think I really do need it, but I might need it next year, or my daughter might need it, or so I'm just going to keep it just in case. Do I use it? Well, I don't really use it today, and I've not used it for a long time, but it costs quite a lot of money, so I might use it, and I feel like I need to <laughs> invest in it so that I do use it. I see people laughing at Leslie. I know you're like in the middle of your thing, but I'm like, I see people going, yeah, that's me, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know where we're coming from. So the do I need it, do I use it, do I love it, which is the last thing. Well, I do love it, and of course we should love things. Of course we should love memories, and we're all sentimental souls. Ingrid and I love a bit of sentimental stuff. Yeah. But there comes a point when there's too much of that. If we love everything that we have that's been given, if we love every card that we've been given by our kids and stuff, then it all becomes a little bit overwhelming. So we're very much in the ask stage. We're in the emotional side of decluttering. So we wanted to focus in on three emotions that might be holding you back. Now, let me tell you, there are hundreds of emotions that we talk about in the Declutter Hub. But those are def these are definitely three of the main ones, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So the first emotion we wanted to talk about is guilt. A lot of people with clutter feel very guilty because maybe their partner, their husband, their friend, their sister-in-law has given them something, a gift or a present. Maybe it's a necklace or a scarf or a cushion and they give it to you and you're like, oh, thanks. And you're like, I, no, thank you so much. I really like it. And then we feel obliged to keep it in our houses. What is that all about? Why do we feel we need to keep everything that people give us? We don't need to do that. Honestly, we don't. It's the same when you kind of have a bit of a bad day or a bad week and you think to yourself, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to buy myself a nice top or a nice pair of shoes and they're a bit more expensive than you actually had originally planned to spend but they're so beautiful and they're so nice and then you walk in them and you realize I cannot walk in these shoes and your toes hurt and you get blisters and they look beautiful and you wear them once and then they're in your cupboard looking at you every day hello I am very expensive. <laughs> you have not warned me. What is this all about? Do not get rid of me because I pay tons of money. You need to keep me. But we feel totally guilty every time we look at those shoes. Let it go. And no, Leslie, I'm not singing Let It Go because she always <laughs> says to me, well, maybe you should sing Let It Go, Ingrid. I'm not doing that yeah, today. No, no, don't do that. I no. think that might tip you over the edge if I get That's, that's going to tip do us a lot over of the edge. Yeah. In yeah. Our no singing things, today. Maybe not today. I can't <laughs> believe today. you said that because that's like red rag to a bull, that. I know, I know, I know. I know. You were really asking for it there. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But anyway, so then we've got things like, um, then we've got uh, one of the other things that we want to talk about. Ingrid's put me off completely now thinking about singing because I'm like, how can I get her to sing? <laughs> no. Um, so we want to talk about worry. Let me give you an example of things that we worry about. So we decide, it's time for a new kettle. We're kind of done with that one that we've got in the kitchen. So we go out, we buy a brand spanking new kettle. We give it pride of place in our kitchen. The old one, perfectly fine, just don't like it anymore. Mm. 
do you know what, it might come in. So I'm just going to put it in the garage because if that kettle breaks, I'm definitely going to need a replacement. And, you know, not that there's 24-hour Tesco's and all that kind of stuff open, and we're not really going to struggle for a kettle or we could boil it on the thing. But we actually think, do you know what, let me just put it in the garage along with all of the other stuff. And so how many people, put your hand, I can Yeah, I know, like, I want to see hands People now. are very shy. <laughs> yeah, who's got something in their garage or in their shed that is in a Yes, place? brave ones. Have you? Are you putting your hand no, up? No, I just want to people to oh, you want put to their hand encourage up. Encourage people. Okay. It's not only kettles. It's toasters, TVs, hair straighteners, Computers. anything with a plug. Anything with a plug. We're going to keep it just in case, right, Leslie? Yeah, because we're worried that we might need it in the future. So that's another thing that we all, that stops us in our tracks and keeps all this clutter. Yeah. Clutter cluttering up. Is that the best yeah. way to say that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Third emotion we wanted to talk to you about today is sentimentality. Leslie is right. We are sentimental goal, um, <laughs> sentimental <laughs> people. Souls. Souls. <laughs> I, I got struck on the goals there. Um, <laughs> but we have to be realistic. We do not have 1,200 cards in our houses. People sending you a card is lovely. So nice. Doesn't mean you have to keep it. If it just says, hello, Ingrid, happy birthday, love, Leslie, I'm decluttering Can that card. Can I start there, Ingrid? I know. Did my card last night say that, or did it have nice words on it? Ingrid's birthday was on Thursday. Yeah. I brought my card down with her because I haven't seen her, <laughs> and I wrote a special I know, I'm note. keeping it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying. Anyway. She sent me, you know, she did send a beautiful message on it, and I'm keeping it, and that's okay. But I'm not going to keep the 80 Christmas cards with the Merry Christmas love from the Johnson family. Why would I want to keep that? Not Maybe if you like the Johnson family. I, no, I'm sorry, but you know... I really if, like the Johnson family. If it's just a card, it can go. But it's the same with kids' artwork. It's the same with the 12,000 pictures we take on our phone. One or two of an event is plenty. We don't need to have all of them. Thin it out a little bit. It's just too much. Don't be too sentimental. Go for the quality over the quantity. It's only if, if you get that warm, fuzzy feeling inside, that's a keeper. Your card was a warm, fuzzy uh, feeling, Leslie. I'm honored. I I'm know. honored. I know. I'm not getting thrown away like the Johnson family. No, <laughs> the Johnson family's out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the crux of everything to do with decluttering. This is the hard bit. This is the bit that's going to stop us in our tracks. This is the bit that's difficult. We totally, totally, 100% believe it's never about the stuff. It's always about the emotions that sit behind the stuff. And if there's one thing that you learn today, it's about taking things back and thinking, what is it that <clears throat> that's stopping me in my tracks from losing things from my house that no longer serve me in my current lifestyle? It's so important for you to think about what suits me now and not live in the past or keep things for the future. Not, not all, I'm not saying don't keep anything from the past or for the future, but it's important to have the bulk of your stuff that's to do with the here and now. Yes, so we are now going to the next stage. We've talked about planning, starting, asking. <sighs> <sighs> Finally, we can do sorting. Yes, it's time to start sorting stuff out. You have a cupboard with stuff, you're gonna do the one cupboard, remember, not the whole room, just the one cupboard. You're gonna take everything out and you're gonna go, okay, I'm going to put like with like. I'm going to now categorize these items. Because when you categorize it and put like with like, you can then start to think, okay, how many have I got of everything? And I don't need you to count every pile of stuff you have, but it's more you get an idea of like, oh, there's more in there than I thought. So for example, if you've got a random kitchen cupboard with lots of Tupperware, you might just want to take it all out and go, okay, I'm going to put the lids on one side, then the pots on the other, and then I'm going to try and match them. And then what have I got left and how many have I got? Wow, there's only two in this family. Why have I got 43 Tupperware containers? This sounds a bit, this is, this is a bit too much. And because by sorting and categorizing like with like, you can start to see what you have. Yes. 
And now we get on to the nice bit, the bit that we spoke about at the beginning, the bit that we all jumped to, which is the storage side of things. And let, looking around at the Clean and Tidy show today, there are some fun, fantastic storage solutions for you for the things that you want to keep. We've got lo loads of fab stuff here. We're, we, we're stuck to our stand, aren't we? But <laughs> we just want to go and have a look at all the fab storage that's here today. So think about storage, but this is the time to think about storage. You need to get the perfect container for your things that you're keeping. Think about visibility. Think about, can I see it? Do I need the lid? Even if the box, the perfect box that you find comes with the lid, you don't need to keep the lid if the lid is not going to be suitable for you. Take those lids off and give yourself visibility. That's also going to help you with accessibility. You're going to be able to get things. Don't have any, a, a lid sometimes. Sometimes we need a lid, of course we do. But sometimes we don't and it makes things more accessible. It takes those barriers away. Because if there's a lid on something, it's just that little bit subconsciously harder to put something away because there's another step, like taking the lid off, putting the thing away. So really think about visibility and accessibility when you think about storage. Think about getting the right size box, the right height box, the right type of box. Is it the right kind of um, material for my kitchen, for my bathroom and so on? So even if you have to use temporary storage boxes until you get to this stage, Wait for the nice bit and make sure you get the perfect box. Very, very important when you're thinking about storage. Yes. So we've got it all out of the cupboard. We've organized it. We've categorized like with like. We've taken out what we don't want. We found the nice box we want to put it in. And then before you move your stuff back, now you're going to clean. This is the moment when you go, I'm cleaning now. I'm going to give that drawer a wipe and a hoover because there's always little crumbs and little hairs and things. Let's give it a hoover. Let's give it a wipe. If it's a kitchen cupboard, maybe a bit of kitchen spray. Get it all out. Get it clean and then move your stuff in. You need to think about a place for everything, everything in its place. To give a simple example, Tupperware probably lives in a kitchen right everything in your home should have a place scissors are handy to have in different places in a bathroom next to an office in a kitchen because you use them everywhere but a stapler is probably very handy to have next to your desk and not in a kitchen right so a place for everything everything in its place now sometimes you might think to yourself but i don't know the right place yet that's okay don't worry don't worry that's fine Put it where you think you're going to need it. You can always move it later. And I forgot my clicker, which says move. <laughs> move. So you can move it later. But now's the time. Cleaning, you put your storage in, and then you're done inside the cupboards. We are almost getting to the end of our cycle of success, which is good news because we've done all the hard work. But now we need to make sure that we put those finishing touches in place. It is so, so important to get your decluttering project finished. Because that, in our big picture goal that we spoke about at the beginning, the finishing stage is the thing that's going to motivate us on to do another decluttering project tomorrow. So what kinds of things do we need to do in the finishing stage? Again, we might want to, we talk, Ingrid's talked about cleaning. She's talked about cleaning inside of the cupboard and things like that and getting all this sort of monkey hairs and crumbs and what have you. Um, out, but we also need to think about cleaning the room so that it looks like that lovely before and after that we see everywhere online. Hoover the room, clean the work surfaces, clean the tops of cupboards, clean the outside of what you've decluttered and organized. And the nice thing is because you've got less stuff, it's not going to be as hard. We can hoover the room from corner to corner. We can clean the work surface in its entirety because it's not chock-a-block with things that we don't need. So really important to think about that cleaning at this stage. Also, super critical when it comes to finishing a project is getting the stuff out of your house that you are donating on the day that you do it. Ideally on the day that you do it or very soon afterwards. Don't leave it hanging around in your hall. Put it into a cupboard in the back of your car. Make sure that you think about an exit plan for your stuff. When and where is that stuff going to go? Very, very important. Yes. So we do finish it. That's the bit that gets missed out. The starting bit. The finish bit and the storage bit is the thing that gets jumbled up quite often and we all jump into the ask stage, don't we? Yes, and we do know a lot of people drive around with their donations for like three months in their car boot. And it's like, I just have to bring it to a charity show. How can this be so hard? We have to finish that project because if we finish something, whether 
honestly, whether it's a tiny little bag or five bags that you've decluttered, it needs to physically leave your house, leave your car, because then you can go, ha, huh, I'm enjoying this. This feels very good. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back for finishing this, this project, for finishing this shelf, this drawer, this cupboard, this kitchen. Because then you can go, actually, in your head mentally, I'm ticking this off. This is now finished. It's not a loose end somewhere, a random bag in a hallway, and that, that's just kind of there, and then something else gets put on top of it, and something else, and something else, and then there's a mountain, and three weeks later, you're like, what is all this stuff? Oh my gosh, there's a bag under it. What is this? Let me open it up. Let me have a look and see what this is. Oh, this is actually quite good stuff. What, why is this in this bin bag? This makes no sense what's... <laughs> and the whole thing starts over again. When you're mentally ready to let something go, actually take it out of your house, honestly, you're not going to even remember. And remember, decluttering is not about perfection. It is about getting it done. Will we make a mistake occasionally? Will we sometimes throw something out and we thought, oh, I had that. Yeah, yeah. Life is not perfect. That's not what this is about. Occasionally you will make a mistake, but be gracious to yourself, be kind to yourself and go, that was a mistake. Okay, let me learn from that and move on. If it's not too expensive, we've Amazon, we can order anything we want and have it within like six hours on our doorstep. So if you've made a mistake on one thing, don't think to yourself, well, I've made a mistake. I'm going to never declutter again. That's it. I'm going to just live in all my clutter the rest of my life. <laughs> don't give up on that. Enjoy it and be proud of yourself for doing this. We're at the end of our cycle of success anyway, so let's just recap very quickly on the different stages. Planning, very important to have that big picture goal in your mind. What is that goal going to be? And how am I going to break that down into something that is achievable? Very, very important. Don't set out with these huge ideas. Break it down and if you feel inspired to continue, continue on and do 10 manageable chunk goals in your day. Get started, don't procrastinate, don't be a perfectionist. Very, very important to get the project started. Just start somewhere. If you don't start, you're never going to make any progress. Ask yourself those decluttering questions, but know that it's not as simple as do I need it, do I use it, do I love it? We need to dig a little bit deeper. If we've struggled a lot of our lives or because of something traumatic that's gone on where our houses have slipped off the radar, some of these decisions are going to be a little bit more difficult. Give yourself some grace, ask yourself some questions but really soul search about what is it that's holding me back from making the right decision. Start to do some sorting. At this stage, you can do a little bit more fine tuning. Look at the numbers. Have I got the right kind of numbers for what I need? Sort like with like, and then you can really make some progress. Storage, we've talked about fantastic storage. Make sure you've got the right kind of storage to keep your stuff and make sure you've got that visibility and accessibility. Those are the two big things when it comes to storage. Put things away in the right place if you can find it, but know, of course, that maybe you might do some more fine tuning when you've done the rest of your house. Do you know what? I put that there, but actually, I think that would be a better place for it. That's okay. This, this process is going to evolve as you go through it. Make sure you get finished with the project. Make sure you go to the charity shop. Do yourself a clean um, of the room. Make sure you've got that perfect before and after. Take a picture monitor your progress and then enjoy the project and then get up again tomorrow and start again. <laughs> I so know, that's the thing, Lynn. decluttering <laughs> is never done, is it? We think, because that's what we see, you just declutter it all once and then I'm done for the rest of my life. We've been decluttered for 12 years. It, it, it just, it's, it's, it's just something that just keeps coming back because we keep buying stuff and our lives change. But we know one thing, decluttering is never about the stuff. It's about the emotions you have with the stuff. The guilt, the sentimentality, the uh, just in case feelings. It's never about the stuff. We think we have the best job in the whole wide world, being professional organizers. We totally love it. And four years ago, we joined forces. So we're both professional organizers, Leslie Manchester, I'm here in Southeast London. But together we set up the Declutter Hub because so many more people needed help. 
And we've got an amazing podcast. If you haven't listened, please feel free to do so. There are 209 episodes for you to enjoy where we talk about decluttering and organizing. It's totally free. You can find it on Spotify, on iTunes, on Amazon Music, on Stitcher. Just find us or go to our website, declutterhub.com, and you can find it. We'd love to have you listen in. We've had loads of topics. We've got, we talk about the 10 things you can declutter from your Christmas boxes or ADHD or cards and sentimental items. Maybe we did a, show, a, a podcast episode about the menopause. Very random. But a lot of people started emailing It's not emailing very random. It's not very random. <laughs> it's like a big thing. I know, I know. It's a big <laughs> thing. But people, I think, decluttering menopause. Well, there's a lot of brain fog when you've got menopause. So decluttering really helps. I know. And we also have, um, we'd, love to we'd love to chat some more. Thank you all so much, by the way, for being here. It's amazing to see you all. I know that some of you are our lovely members. Some of you are podcast listeners. We're absolutely delighted to see you all here today. We're over at stand E36. We've got a fabulous, fabulous competition for you where you can win things like a one-to-one -one call with Ingrid and I, where you can show us your room and we can give you all our hints and tips. We've got sorting out sentimental course, if that's what you're struggling. We've got an eight-week boot camp. We've got a countdown to Christmas. We've got loads of fab prizes. So do make sure that you pop along to our stand and enter our competition if you've not done that. It's also online on the uh, website as well. If you, and we can talk a little bit more about our membership. We have a membership with loads of members worldwide that we help. We, what we do is we teach people how to declutter themselves and, so, and how to really focus on changing that mindset. And we have loads and loads of fantastic tools that cover all the bases when it comes to um, learning how to declutter and organize. And we would love to talk more about it. And we'd love for you to enter our competition and enter in our world. And of course, do listen into our lovely free podcast. So thank you so much for having us. And we're happy to take some questions. I was going to say, you're not going yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty certain that we're going to have some questions. So anybody got a question that they'd like to ask Leslie or in Ingrid or both of them? Hang on. <gasps> I'm running over. Here we go. Hello, thank you. That was ah. really, really helpful. Um, I'm somebody who is good at decluttering and organising. And in fact, I've worked in the past as a declutterer and taken a break at the moment. Um, when it comes to my own stuff, great at the decluttering, but I absolutely hate doing housework. <laughs> I just find it so boring, you know, cleaning, dusting, hoovering, and I know it needs to be done, of course. Yeah. Um, any tips on you know making that bit more more enjoyable I think it's the same as decluttering break it down don't go okay I've got Monday off and then I've got a list with 14 things I need to clean the bathroom over all the stairs empty the dishes do wash my window who can do that yeah I know but you don't want to do that on the one day you need to start breaking it down and go okay this week maybe is I'm going to do the bathroom on the Monday and the downstairs loo on the Tuesday and I'm going to do a bit of dusting on the Wednesday and and just go I'm going to do half an hour don't already go out okay I'm going to do five hours of cleaning today because it's like I think really? yeah I think as well we've got we we're big advocates of daily weekly and seasonal resets and yeah. so and we talk a lot about non-negotiables so it's all about working out what your non-negotiables are for the day so if you've got pets it might be something to do with your pets it might be if you've got kids it's going to be different so what are my absolute non-negotiables for today that's where I'm going to get started and everything else is a bonus we definitely advocate a daily reset and depending on the makeup of your family those daily resets might have to happen if you've got young kids you might have to do four resets in a day before they go to school, when they've gone to school, before they come home and before you go to bed. And so, you know, so the daily reset looks different for everybody and those non-negotiables look different. Yeah. But yeah, we're big into resets and routines and that, um, and that sits alongside the decluttering process. More decluttering you do, the easier the resets become. Yeah. But it's all about habit forming. Yeah. Yeah, break it down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely at least four resets. I've got two and a seven-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm closer to 10 resets. In yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Any tips on persuading that your husband they don't need eight hammers and 15 phone <laughs> chargers? We get asked that question <laughs> really all the time, don't we, Leslie? <laughs> yeah, I think when it comes to other halves, let's say, um, I think 
we need to lead by example. And so what we find, we get, we get asked this all the time, yeah. and we can't change other people, so we have to work through our own decluttering process and hope that it starts to filter through. And then what, what we find is once people start to see how simplicity and having less helps people, then people go, oh, okay, I kind of like that a little bit, and I like how that's making the family feel. I like how the house feels. Maybe I can do a little bit, a bit of that. It takes a while to get to that point, yeah. but sometimes, I mean, the hammers, you might be on a bit of a, <laughs> you really might be struggling with the hammers, but other things <laughs> might be possible. But I think it's just, we're not advocates of throwing other people's stuff away. They have to get to that point themselves. But what we find is people definitely come on board later. Yeah. When I say definitely, more often than not. Yes. They don't always. No, but. no. Sometimes you're just fighting a losing battle but other times it really takes a while. So we always say, start with your own things. And in the beginning, like, well, this is a decluttering malarkey. What's this declutter hub? Why are you suddenly quoting Ingrid and Leslie the whole time? Because that's what happens. But Ingrid and Leslie say, oh, what is Ingrid and Leslie? What's this all about? But slowly but surely, the, it starts to trickle through. So good luck. <laughs> the, amount, the amount of times I've said to my husband, how hard is it to roll a tea towel? <laughs> Put it away in the right place. Anyway, we have another question here. Thank you. Great session. Um, can I just ask, when it comes to storage, how do you go about identifying which boxes to use? Because I found when I bought my house, I was really domestically challenged when I bought my house. And I didn't know what the options were and what was out there and, you know, how to buy the right boxes for the right things. Um, yeah. So there are resources available that sort of tells you, or directs you to the right. It's very, you know, it's very personal to your house, your space, your stuff, your budget, you know, so there's loads of different options out there. But I think it's just that the most important thing is you work out what needs to go into the box first, That's the, and how many of those things you've got. And at that point, you can say, okay, let's look at my shelf, make, make sure the height is right. I mean, sometimes even as professional organizers, we can do a lot of work to try and find the right box for people as well. So it's not always out there. But you know, look, put, you can put measurements into Amazon or, or whatever, do you know what I mean? You're uh, online then, and, and that can come up. And so it's just about making sure we sort of try and help people, don't we, in the membership about what type of box, what material a box works in different yeah. scenarios. Yeah. But yeah, it's just sometimes it's just a simple, we're, we're big advocates of rectangular or square boxes and not round, just so we can maximize the space. Yeah. So there's no tried and tested formula because there are so many different scenarios out there of what type of stuff you need to put in them. But just go look in them. But the most important thing is to think about what's going in the box, yeah? yeah. Talking of storage, by the way, a yes. place for everything is amazing. awesome. Yes, yes. got some stuff in there. Any more questions? Oh, here we go. Hello. Uh, Hello. My question is to do with clothes. Yeah. I always have loads of different size clothes. Um, any suggestions of how I get rid of my piles of clothes? <laughs> <laughs> just generally. Yeah. Just <laughs> I think it's important. Do you want to talk it? Take it, Ingrid. Go, go. I just think it's very, very important to be realistic. So we're all about realism. And we've all got this. We're not on our own here where we've got our kind of clothes that we got into. And we're like, I think I'm going to do that one. I'm definitely going to get back into that. We're all, you know, we all have that. And so it's about being realistic. It's about looking at, right, OK, let me talk to myself. How realistic is it that in the next six or 12 months, I am going to lose that weight or put that weight on because we have, uh, it works the other way around as well yeah. to get it back into that. And sometimes you just need to let it go and go, OK, I'm not going to put that pressure on myself and I am going to lose. I'm going to keep a few. But it very much depends on whether that's bothering you, whether that's impacting on you. If you've got piles and piles of stuff everywhere, then it is impacting you and it's stopping you from seeing the things in your wardrobe that you do want to wear. It has an emotional, it's emotionally negative for you to just be surrounded by things that are not possible for you. What we want to do is we want to open that wardrobe and go, all of these things are possible. And so we like to take the negativity out of it. Have a few things residually with goals and aspirations, but be realistic. That's the most important thing. Yeah? yeah. Come and talk to us a little bit more on the stand. Yeah. Page, so we can delve yeah, into a little definitely. bit deeper. Come to our stand and we'll, we'll, we'll expand on that because there's a lot to say about that, actually. Yeah. 
And you might have to join the queue because we're going to have to close this I now. I, I reckon we've probably got a load more questions. But um, as Leslie and Ingrid said, that we're about to do our stand. We're over there. Over there. 36. So you can go and uh, maybe not all at once, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but throughout the day, do go and have a chat with them and ask Please, any Yeah, questions. we'd love to see you. But thank you so much, guys. I've just got rid of a pair of skinny jeans that I always thought I'd get into since... <laughs>